Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to show you another dune buggy related project related to electronic fuel injection. I'll go ahead and take this air filter off to get you a better view. Before we talk about fuel injection, I first would like to talk about carburetors. The purpose of the carburetor on any engine is to take the air being pulled into the engine and mix it with the appropriate amount of fuel from the tank to ensure that the mixture of air and fuel going into the engine is satisfactory, producing a clean and complete combustion without producing any unburned fuel waste or without producing any inconsistent combustion or detonation. Now that is generally achieved in carburetors by using a restricted section of pipe called a venturi, which creates very high airflow velocity through the carburetor and as a result creates a vacuum on a nearby orifice within that venturi called a jet, which then meters a specific amount of fuel relative to the amount of air passing over it into the airstream. Now generally and on paper this works really quite well, and as we know from driving this buggy around, the carburetor is perfectly satisfactory to operate correctly. However, there are some drawbacks to using carburetors on engines. One, of such, one such drawback is they tend to get fouled up and dirty over time due to contaminants in the fuel and due to gelling and shellacking of the fuel itself if it sits too long in the carburetor. A second drawback of carburetors is they tend not to work very well in cold weather. If it's too cold out, the fuel may not uh, initially vaporize very quickly and the engine may be hard to start and may give minimum power or have lag spots in the acceleration as a result of that lack of fuel vaporization. A third drawback of carburetors is they're tuned for only one ideal air to fuel ratio at any given RPM load level and because of that they can't be used with alternative fuels like E85 or other mixtures without needing to be rejetted. We're going to try to solve some of these drawbacks using a prototype, super simple, minimum sensor count electronic fuel injection system, which I've prototyped here and will demonstrate shortly. Before I talk about the electronic control of this fuel injection system, let's talk a little bit about the plumbing. First and foremost, what I've constructed here is purely a prototype for initial testing and is not going to see any serious road use time. The braided vinyl hose does withstand gasoline, but because it's using braided clamps, these worm clamps, it tends to gradually leak over time and lose pressure. This is not ideal from a fire safety perspective or an environmental perspective, and as a result, this is going to get upgraded as the technology that I'm developing uh, is actually put into full-time service. But for testing, this has so far proven satisfactory, although that being said, your results may vary, and fire hazard is a very significant risk at the pressures involved in these systems. So if you're going to build something similar to this, be, adv be advised that you are doing so at your own risk. So let's proceed. This is operating at around 60 PSI when the system is running and the electronic fuel pump is operating. That fuel pressure is constantly applied to this injector, which is nothing more than a solenoid controlled valve. That valve has only two states, it is open or it is closed. So you might ask how exactly do you operate it in a linear fashion where you can vary the amount of fuel up or down if it's only on or off. The, re the answer is actually just like you would operate any power electronics converter. You use pulse width modulation. By varying the ratio of time that the valve is open to the time that the valve is closed, the fuel that is metered out can be varied in a linear fashion depending on the demand of the engine. Let's have a look at the temporary fuel supply system that I have set up for the injector. What I have here is a 5 gallon red can and connected to it I have two dip tubes. One goes all the way to the bottom of the tank where it picks up fresh fuel and the other returns excess fuel from the pump and the regulator into the tank. This is a positive displacement high pressure fuel pump and it operates in a constant flow regime. Because of that constant flow of fuel a regulator is needed to set the output pressure and to return any excess fuel that isn't used by the engine, which is a lot since these pumps move a huge volume of fuel at a very high flow rate, to the tank via the return dip tube. At the output of this uh, combined filter and regulator module, our filtered and pressurized fuel goes through this line where I have an inline gauge to monitor the pressure and finally makes its rounds to the injector where it can be injected and metered into the engine. Let's talk about how a mechanical spark ignition system actually works. Now the fundamental principle here is generating a high voltage pulse using a set of points and then distributing it using a rotating distributor rotor to the appropriate spark plug where the spark is needed at that given time. The spark ignition coil is a type of flyback transformer, basically a dual, co a dual coil inductor which can transform 
high-ish voltage pulses at the primary to extremely high voltage pulses at the secondary. Now, what, the way the high voltage pulses are generated at the primary is by closing a set of points, which is just a mechanically commutated switch, allowing 12 volts to be applied across the primary winding. This charges the inductor as the current through the winding increases over time, until the points are then opened when the spark is desired. When this occurs, an extremely high voltage appears across this winding, since inductors resist changes in rate of uh, flow of current, and as a result, this high voltage pulse is reflected to the secondary and generates a spark at the plug. If you didn't have a condenser here, a lot of that energy could potentially be dissipated in the gap between the points as a spark. This wears out the points and wastes some of the energy that would otherwise go to the plugs. So instead, a condenser is applied here, which is just a film capacitor, and that allows an LC oscillator to set up here, which results in a gradual ring down, creating a hot sustained spark at the plug and saving the points from excessive voltage uh, stress. What we're going to do in this EFI system is actually measure the voltage at this point and then be able to use that to ascertain how frequently the points are opening and closing and thus what the speed of the engine is at any given time. Now the action of our fuel injection controller is going to be governed almost exclusively by the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. P is the pressure of the gas in the intake manifold of the engine, V is the volume, or in this case we'll be treating it as a volume flow rate of gas through the manifold, N is the number of moles of gas, and a mole is simply a quantity of gas particles. R is the ideal gas constant, which varies depending on the units being used by the system, and T is the temperature, which can be approximated. As mentioned before here, we're going to be pulling the pressure directly from the MAP, or Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor. We'll get the volume by taking the points RPM, or revolutions per minute, and multiplying the engine displacement by that constant, the engine displacement is the 1200 cc's of our 36 horsepower engine and will vary depending on which engine is being used with this system. It's important to note that in this case, at any given time, half of the cylinders are intaking per revolution. So we have to divide the number obtained here by two if we just multiply the volume flow rate uh, from all of the displacement by the speed. N is what we're solving for. This is the number of moles of gas. And for air, the one mole is equal to about 28.97 grams. So this will allow us to obtain the mass flow rate of air. R is an ideal gas constant. And in my case, I'm using liters, pascals, Kelvin, and mole. So we can use the 8314 as our value there. And we can either approximate T based on an average value, since this is quite high temperature relative to absolute zero, or if we want to be really accurate, we can measure the ambient intake air temperature using a thermometer or a thermistor. In my case, I'm just approximating it as around 273 Kelvin. Now, once we have the mass flow rate of air, we simply multiply this by our air fuel ratio, which we want to obtain in the system to determine the mass flow rate of fuel, which is given as a number that the injector will supply, uh, which will assign our duty cycle to the injector controller. All of this is taken care of in the Arduino code that I have written and posted to GitHub, and that's how the system actually runs the injector using the obtained signals. Here's a look at how my ECM circuit actually works. We'll talk first about how the fuel injector is being controlled. Now the fuel injector is a binary device, it's either open or closed, so to vary the amount of fuel we simply change the ratio of on to off by having a pulse width modulated signal coming in to control it. Now these injectors are designed to pulse relatively slowly, so I'm using around a 10 hertz pulse. Now this is an MJE13007 transistor, which is a high voltage transistor. By using a high voltage transistor, I can forego having a back EMF diode across the injector, which allows it to open and close more quickly because there isn't a decay time for that current flowing through the inductor. I've decoupled the transistor from the microcontroller with a 15 ohm resistor simply to limit the current from the GPIO pin into the base of the transistor. That's just to protect the microcontroller. Now this microcontroller can be any sort of microcontroller with ADCs and digital pins. In this case, I've chosen an Arduino Nano, which has USB serial support and uses the common ATmega328P microcontroller chip. I've added an LED for indication of the status of the system. And then additionally, the MAP sensor is being connected to one of the ADC inputs. Now the MAP sensor simply behaves as a potentiometer whose uh, center point changes depending on the pressure applied to it from that manifold connection. 
I'm deriving a 5 volt supply for the microcontroller using an LM7805 linear regulator, and I've decoupled that on both sides with around 470 microfarad capacitors. Now here's where things get interesting. I'm picking up my point signal from the distributor, which as you recall from a previous slide or previous page, is a very noisy, high voltage containing signal. I'm filtering this using a second order RC filter with a Zener diode for protecting the input of the microcontroller. First I filter it through a 1K ohm resistor and a 100 nanofarad capacitor, both of which have been sized to be able to tolerate the high voltage uh, spikes in the system. And then I'm secondarily filtering this with a 10K ohm resistor and another 100 nanofarad capacitor. This results in a relatively satisfactory waveform, which has a sharp falling edge on the off, uh, off swing that the microcontroller can then read as an interrupt. Now right now, I'm reading in the interrupt signal as a falling edge digital signal, and that works most of the time, but occasionally there are transient falling edges because of that ringing oscillation at the input, which can cause the microcontroller to overcount the RPM. I have another circuit in mind that I think will solve that in the future, which I might cover in another video. But for now, this provides suitable EFI control for basic functionality, and the performance is relatively good. Let's go ahead and fire this up and see how it runs. I'll try to get some good shots of the actual injector itself, as well as the overall system while it's being started. This is a cold start, the engine has not been run in several days, we'll see how it performs. So as you can see, you can actually visually see the fuel in the injector as it's being dispensed. Now ideally I might have this coming down vertically into the intake, but again, I do wanted to keep it away from the license plate so I could actually drive this around for test runs. You can see it's pretty responsive. A little bit of lag still, again it's a single air fuel ratio system so it's not enriching it at all when it's being revved. And another issue that I did run into is it seems to overcount the number of pulses on the RPM sensor when it's running at low RPM. Thus, you tend to get a little bit too rich of a mixture at idle. So there you saw it. The engine started up, idled, revved, and did everything it was supposed to with a single fuel injector and just two sensors putting data into that ECM. All the code for the Arduino that's running the ECM will be posted to GitHub along with hand-drawn schematics for the electronics that drive the ECM. Now I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Keep in mind this is all very hazardous stuff. You want to use the proper materials when you do a final version of this that's actually going to see road service and try anything you see here at your own risk. Anyway, thanks for watching the channel and I look forward to seeing you next time.